Cities have often been the place where we go for great cuisine. The glistening lights, the bustling corners, the star ratings of the chefs. This episode is a departure from all of that. It's those same chefs hosting pop-up dinners and meals on the farm and secret dining events, cooking off of the grid and out of their comfort zone. This week on Wisconsin Foodie, we meet up with Tori Miller as he leaves his kitchen at Latoile behind for a farm dinner with Willie Lehner of Bluemont Dairy and the Outstanding in the Field gang, as well as 250 dinner guests. Then we catch up with the Underground Food Collective as they host a 100-person pop-up dinner at Latoile. Lastly, we peer into the world of food bloggers and home chefs through Marika von Hasselberg and her blog, Porno Magico, for a secret 12-person, invite-only, Valentine's dinner. Whether you're dining on the edge of the farm or by invite-only, our guest list is open for the next 30 minutes in this episode of Wisconsin Foodie. It's counterintuitive because this is where you would usually come for one of Tory Miller's extraordinary meals, La Toile. But we're packing up with him in the back and we're going to head to Willie Leonard's Blue Mount Dairy. That's where we'll have the meal with the outstanding in the field folks. Things that come right out of the earth are prepared by great regional chefs, in this case Tory Miller, on an extraordinary setting. It's a treasure I don't want to miss. When Jim Denovan of Outstanding in the Field had a thought in the late 80s and early 90s that other people might have, where does our food come from? He was one of the tipping points that then became a national disposition. His red and silver bus tours the country and comes to great agrarian settings like this one in Wisconsin, Blue Mount Dairy that is home to Willie Lehnard, a master cheesemaker who is also an outlier of his own sort, creating new methods of cheesemaking and breaking the mold, if you will, pretty much every time. Is that we got that My name is Jim Denovan. I'm the founder of Outstanding in the Field. Yeah, Outstanding in the Field is a tour um, of farm dinners across the United States. And as we travel, we consider the local chef to be the, the ambassador of place. They're the ones that are sharing their stories, their connections, um, their menu. And we and basically make it very easy for the chef and the farmer to come out to a place like this. The only pairing you could put with this would be the great regional and now nationally renowned chef, Tori Miller of La Toile, whose restaurant, if you wanted to make a national comparison, the only one you could come with would be Chez Panis in Berkeley, California. It's in this otherworldly beauty, it's in these locations where the cheese is made, where the vegetables are pulled out of the ground, and where people come to sit in the night air of a summer evening in Wisconsin to appreciate something that we've always known. Getting everything set up. It's a little, it's always a little pressed for time, but it's like any other event, you kind of hurry up and wait. So we're just banging out as much as we can. I try to do these events like as smoothly as possible. And uh, I have this saying in our kitchen where it's like, I'd rather have a hard prep time and an easy service. So I'm kind of putting a lot of pressure on everybody to get everything ready so we can have a nice smooth service. I mean, at the end of it, we are doing a cookout here, so. So, uh, what's it like for you to cook in the rough like this? You know, for me, it's like this is the third year that we're doing it. So, mm -hmm. um, I get kind of used to doing it. I think it's kind of nice to get out of the kitchen and, you know, get with the, the crew a little bit and do something a little different. And for me, it's, it, you know, it gets... It gets monotonous to be like, okay, you know, everything goes on these white plates and gets served on, you know, served this way and it has to look this way and be eaten this way. Right. It's like, we're outside, you know, we're doing the best we can. If the food is like smoking hot when it gets to you, it's not on purpose. So like, just enjoy it, enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy the company. 
um, and then let the food kind of just speak for itself. Anytime you do a dinner like this, you kind of have to think on the fly, you have to make changes um, and be ready for it, you know, and I think for me it's like it's not about making the perfect L'Etoile dinner, it's about making the best dinner that we can make out in the field with the ingredients that we brought and that's the kind of the philosophy. Once once we left L'Etoile with great ingredients, I knew that the dinner is going to be good. It's just a matter of us getting it on the plates. So first course, uh, it's cherry season so I want to make like something that I love, it's this cheesy bread salad with like Door County cherries. So we're gonna slice a uh, cheese, it's called Petit Frere. It's from Crave Brothers. A lot of people mistake it for like a Brie style cheese, but it's actually a, a Alsatian style monster cheese that hasn't aged yet. We're gonna do a little salad. We have all these Door County cherries. We're gonna like just literally toss this together um, with a little bit of olive oil, throw it around into some salad greens. The salad greens are coming from a, a farm called Gitto Organics. We've got some fresh greens. We've got Door County cherries that were pitted this morning. And I'm going to smash it into this monster style Petit Ferrer from Crave Brothers. God love a good summer salad. Next course is the green and yellow wax bean salad. I use a variety of, of Asian farmers, most of them being Hmong. Hmong farmers here in uh, the Madison area. We got a lot of green beans and yellow beans from them. And uh, we just quickly blanched them. We're gonna toss them with this vinaigrette that's kind of like a Vietnamese style vinaigrette. That's gonna go over the top of the beans. Those are gonna get placed on top of some heirloom tomato slices. The heirloom tomatoes are from Snug Haven Farm. They're in Paoli, which is also like a couple exits back that way. Then on top of that, we're gonna put some of this fried pork belly. The Pork belly's from Willow Creek Farm. We cured it overnight with like some chilies and a bunch of salt and sugar. Then we braised it so it's super tender. We're gonna fry it up kind of like chicharron style, which is like that fried pork back fat. And then over the top of that, we're gonna throw some of these um, spicy cashews. So these are three of my favorite things in summer. Wisconsin tomatoes, when they're in season. These happen to be heirloom. Pork belly, this one happens to be good and fatty. And my mom would be so proud. Green beans. Here's the thing about Wisconsin tomatoes when they're in season. You could skip everything else because they're so good. The next course is the trout. We're gonna grill whole trout. So like uh, for the platters, there's probably gonna be like three trouts on each platter. We're tying them up, we're just gonna grill them, serve them whole. We're serving that with some Beach Armor sweet corn. Beach Armor, again, is in Mount Horeb. We just cut it off the cobs, we're just gonna heat it up with some butter. Then we have some collard greens. It's actually some collard greens that we're mixing with a little bit of um, lacinato kale. And uh, we're gonna pick those up with some vegetable stock and some bacon and some butter. The bacon is homemade. As a famous chef once said to me when I didn't eat the skin, do you eat the skin of chicken? Of course I do. So you eat the skin of the trout because you honor the whole animal. You guys, come on. This was so worth the drive. Wow. One more savory course and I'm happy the sun came out. It's Wisconsin, baby. That's how we roll, man. For the, uh, the last savory course, um, we made, Shed actually made all these sausages, uh, like yesterday. The merguez is a lamb sausage that comes from Black Earth Valley, sustainably raised lamb um, from Amish communities out there. The merguez, the, the main flavors there is roasted red peppers. And we have, uh, what, a kielbasa, Jed? Yeah, so pork kielbasa is a, is a pork sausage that's kind of ground, very smooth, and then we smoke it. Then we have a sweet Italian sausage, also with Willow Creek Farm pork, and it's pretty straightforward. There's some fennel in there, some garlic, some chili, some onion. 
We're gonna do some mashed potatoes. They're actually like a crushed potato with uh, Blumont um, garlic and um, Blumont bandage cheddar. It's gonna be like this cheesy garlic smashed potato. I made some yesterday and ate it and it was good. So this is the heart of Outstanding in the Field. We were on our fourth course and this summer rainstorm came out of nowhere like a jet rushing over you. And everyone cheered because the pressure changed and the temperature. And we're just 20 yards from that great cheese cave and these extraordinary courses keep coming out. And now you can smell the loam coming up from the land after this great fresh rainstorm. This is why they get in a bus and travel all over the country. This is why these chefs haul their kitchens out to the middle of nowhere. And this is why we come here to have this extraordinary meal. So being a Wisconsin guy, and specifically a Milwaukee guy, I have a distinct predilection towards the sausage. However, these mashed potatoes are filled with Willie Leonard's cheese. So I'm going there first. Because when you're, I don't know, 200 yards from the cave where this cheese was aged, it's really the only way to begin. You know, I didn't like mashed potatoes growing up. And now that I'm grown up, I still don't really like them. But these, I really, really like. And as any good sausage connoisseur knows, he or she knows how to layer it with some great peppers and onion. This sausage, and only a couple of great chefs with the great relationships can get it. Some kind of sauce. I'm from Milwaukee, which is in Wisconsin. So we grow up knowing sausage. This is killer sausage. This is killer killer sausage. So this is outstanding in the field. We've had five, six amazing courses and this is, this is what it's all about. There are people from four states that have driven here. There's a great chef. There's a master cheesemaker who's cutting new ways on an international scale. There's, this is how good it can get. This is, everything came from a few miles away. It's just that simple. It's become a national trend, this farm to table thing, but it's something we should never take for granted. It can always be this good. It certainly was tonight. I want to keep doing it. All right, yeah. cheers guys. Thank you guys so much cheers for being here. Cheers to you, cheers. Seriously. Love you guys. Cheers to all of you. It's been a blast. Who's with a nice shotgunner? That is outstanding in a field right there. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. The Underground Food Collective is just that, not a hierarchy of chefs, though it was begun by the Hunter brothers, Johnny and Ben. They started first with catering and then sausage making, and they finally achieved their goal of having a true restaurant space in Madison, Wisconsin, ironically called Kitchen. In July, their hopes were dashed when the place caught on fire. But this is the story of how the community came together for the collective, how they embraced their style of cooking, and how they kept their spirits up. We're having a pop-up dinner with Underground Food Collective and Underground Kitchen. It's one of those things where I've been friends with Ben and Johnny and, and Mel and those guys for a long time. And when they opened Kitchen, you know, we're all very excited. And it's one of those things where there's a lot of camaraderie between the two crews. And I'm actually hosting tonight, so it's kind of funny for me to be stepping out from the kitchen and just saying, you know, greeting all the guests and seating everybody. It should be pretty interesting. So guys on the meat board? We're taking over Gray's tonight with Leitoa and uh, we got the late talk kitchen, which is pretty exciting. Around six years ago, I started a catering company with my brother. And uh, from there, we started doing some butchering stuff and started doing these special dinners, much like this is kind of based off of tonight. And then we kind of used that to platform into a restaurant. My parents were like, Fire, flower child hippies from the 70s and like you know we grew up on like sprouts and like total hippie food my entire childhood. I had this epiphany one day I was like oh what we do is like hippie food and then we add bacon or lard or like some kind of like rich French food or like Italian 
It's getting that super clean, fresh flavors mixed with pork fat. We're not doing service without the duck fat. This is a uh, herb veal sausage. This came from Fountain Prairie, John and Dorothy. Pretty much my parents. You know, like when we started the catering company, the only the only relationships I ever had was with local farmers. It's the normal thing for us, you know. Like it's the the way that you go about your ordering, the purveyors you look into. You you know, it's always like you know, this is who we use, this is how we run, and that's the functioning goal of our process. You know, like we we started off that way, and and um, when it's normalized, you know, it doesn't become special anymore. It's just kind of how things roll. Very good. It's very cool. Here. So we've been open for about eight months and um, there was a fire in the building. Um, the, the building has been pretty much destroyed. After that, you know, we were kind of a restaurant without a home. Um, so a couple of restaurants around Madison have said like, hey, you can come take over our spaces. So that was the idea for tonight. It was a real big tragedy when, you know, we all wake up and we're all coming downtown and you see the big billowing smoke. And, you know, at first you don't think much about it. And then everyone's like, I, I look on Facebook and this is for real, it's happening. So we all walked down there and sure enough, you know, it's just not much you can do. And I said right away, I was like, I got three words, pop-up restaurant. We're doing a, uh, a roasted veal shaved thinly with pickles, aioli, and uh, au jus. Literally the day of the fire, Tori sent me a text message. It was like, hey man, I've got, I've got two words for you. Pop-up at Lake Boss. That looks alright. Flowers? You know, it was just like a really heartfelt, kind of like kind gesture in like the midst of like just seeing a lot of what we had all worked on for a long time. Literally up in flames. He just turned the kitchen over to us and so like basically everyone that you see running around here used to work at the kitchen. Table six. Guys, the panzanella's knockout. Yeah, I mean, it's a community here, you know? Like, it's like the restaurants here are friends. I don't know, it's been amazing, like, the amount of people who come out. Like, you know, we, we put the tickets up for this, like, a week ago, and we had well over 100 responses. We sold out, um, and it's a Sunday night at 6 o'clock, you know? That's not the easiest thing. Kitchen crews and cooks in general, you know, there's something, the, the real joy that we get isn't monetary, it's not financial, it's more about the camaraderie amongst the kitchen, amongst other restaurants as well. And, you know, in my heart, I was like imagining my own crew and watching them spread out all over the city because no one really knows what to do. Everyone needs to work. At the same time, their heart is, is in this kitchen that is, is, is no more right now. So uh, I thought it was important to offer that to Johnny um, and Ben right away, just from the kitchen side saying, you know, let's just get together. You guys get your crew together, cook some food. <laughs> I mean, Tori, Tori's a nationally recognized cook, like he runs the best kitchen in Madison, like absolutely what he does is inspiring and, and I come to his restaurant to like, you know, see what's the highest ingredients, kind of the best technique, kind of, you know, you see that played out really well here and, you know, Lake Spa has been around forever and, and you have to respect what that means to the Madison community and kind of the farmers here too, so. You know, just giving Kitchen a, a presence still, you know, so that people don't forget that they're not just a catering company, they're, they're actually a great restaurant that deserves to kind of go on and they just need some time to, to rebuild and things like that. And, you know, they can use our space anytime they want on Sunday nights. Everything tastes good, man. Love it. The uptick in food blogs as of the last couple of years has been tenfold. This is the story of one of those bloggers, Marika von Hasselberg, and her creatively named blog, Horno Magico. She decided to take what's on the screen and translate it to the kitchen for a secret Valentine's Day dinner. And what could be more romantic on Valentine's Day than dinner with 12 strangers? Hi, my name is Marika. I have a blog called Horno Magico. I started my blog originally 
because I looked at a lot of food blogs and there were a lot of people out there putting information on their blogs, but it wasn't really the information that I wanted. What I wanted to know is what are other people eating? I'm so curious about it. So I started a blog, but listing everything that I eat all the time, every day. Horno Magico means magic oven because that's the ideal culinary experience. It's so good, it tastes like it was cooked in a magic oven. There are so many blogs out there where people tell you what they think. I don't want to tell you what I think. <laughs> I just want to take pictures and put it on my blog. <laughs> I kind of wanted to take the spirit of it and be able to share it with more people because I like cooking for the people and it's exciting to have a excuse to make a dinner on Valentine's Day. I've always wanted to do that, to have a big party and invite all my friends over. But it just never came together in the past and now we're doing it on an even bigger scale, which is kind of fun. There's the entrees, seven hour lamb on a waffle, and balsamic gastrique. George, go eat your lamb waffle. Or a onion roasted and stuffed with leek bread pudding and that's gonna have some Wisconsin Gruyere on top. I think that one of the most important things you can do in your life is to cook for yourself and the people around you and have a relationship with the food that you're eating. We're headed to the best place at the historic Pabst Brewery for the first ever Orno Magico dinner. You know, we have everything from a shop back and, and a jigsaw to a crock pot full of lamb. There was like some crazy natural disaster right now. We could survive out of this car for a while if we had to. The best place is the best place. It's such a cool place. It's really great. It's old um, Pabst Brewery, but it's just really charming. It smells like church, but it's full of beer. We call it beer church. <laughs> space is awesome. There's all this original painting from the 40s, late 40s I believe, but he painted all these paps and beer related murals. There's no other room that I know of that's like it. I think, that, I think our guests are in for a little bit of a surprise. Oh my god! Everybody's here, it's like a party! Not everybody has the time or the inclination to plan out a meal that's based on making other people feel cozy and comfortable. And I just want to share that with other people. Welcome to Beer Church. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I worship at the altar. The room is lit. If everyone has their drink, um, come on over to this secret room. A roasted root vegetable soup, and it's gonna have a little bit of truffle oil and fried caper. And it's garnished with some sweet water organic pea sprouts and just a little bit of a lemony dressing. <laughs> Don't put that on anything. Those are red wine soaked figs. They're gonna go with the lamb. The lamb's gonna go in a waffle. There's gonna be whipped cream on top and some balsamic fig gastric. I'm excited. Oh. <laughs> is it getting warm in here? Yeah, is it getting really warm in here? Oh, is it me? Geez. I tried to think of things that will be kind of sexy and luxurious and festive. The lamb, for instance, is this, this lamb with champagne and figs on a waffle like a sexy mattress of waffle, I mean. So that one, I think, was particularly inspired by Valentine's Day, the spirit of Valentine's Day. These are roasted onions stuffed with leek, bread, pudding, with a little bit of Wisconsin green on top, and an apple cider gastric. This is a roasted onion with leek bread pudding. Right. This is a roast, seven hour roasted lamb, the sort of traditional French recipe, the marinade, is some brandy and some champagne. It's over a waffle <laughs> and it's topped with savory whipped cream. So it's just a, not, not so, just salty whipped. 
Seriously, can you ask for anything better? No. I'm digging it. Thank you. <laughs> Someone have the land yet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it really reminds me how great it is to get outside of your little silo and be thrown into a situation that revolves around food, <laughs> but with a table of people that like you least expected, but also found out that there was so much in common. In common yes. yeah. This is sort of the time where we want to introduce you to everybody working on this. Thank you. Um, so we've already known Jorge and me and Arthur and Marika. Yeah. Yeah. And Bell. the Horno Magico. <laughs> Major underwriting and support for Wisconsin Foodie is provided by the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin and the Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board. For more information or recipes, visit eatwisconsincheese.com. <laughs>